my mom, she checks my Facebook, my emails, my texts. She must have just deleted it before I even saw it. It's not like against the law or something. She thinks she's protecting me. And that was a clip from Men, Women, and Children, Jason Reitman's screen version of Chad Colchin's novel by the same name, exploring the secret lives and longings of otherwise average Americans as played out online and in real life. And joining us from L.A. to give us his take is WSJ film critic Joe Morgenstern. Joe, great to have you with us. Hi, Tanya. Nice to be here. So you wrote in your review, a better name for this film would be Children, Children, and Children. So I guess the adults didn't impress you too much. The whole film didn't impress me too much. I must say, this is one of the most depressing and pretentious, or pretentious and depressing films that's come along in, in quite a while. That's an achievement in itself. Um, it's, it's seldom that a film just sets me off wrong from the very first frame. This one did, it's basically, it's taken from a pot boiler and it's, you know, sort of like the ice storm. It's unhappy families in, in suburbia. Um, the children, the kids are living their secret lives online, sex obsessed, of course, and the sex obsessed parents deplore what the kids are doing online, suspicious of, of it, worried about it. But hypocrites that they are, they're living out their fantasies online too. But what's so hard to describe unless you see this film, and I urge you not to see this film, <laughs> is the, the cosmic element, which involves uh, beautiful images of a Voyager satellite cruising among, among the planets, while Emma Thompson, in her most refined voice, intones fond observations about the human race and the need for kindness. I just wanted to howl with laughter during these episodes. All right, Joe, you've convinced me I'm going to skip it, although I do think the effect of living online and what that has on our personal lives and relationships does seem like a great subject, but I guess this wasn't well, the sure. film. Well, sure. I mean, it's, it's connected to your Google story that preceded this one. There's a real subject right. here, but not the way it's treated. We'll have to wait for another director to produce that one. All right, so you also took a look at the English comedy Pride. Here's a clip. What I'd like to know is what Bromley told his mum and dad. Yeah. I just... That's no big deal. <laughs> Come on. I said that I was doing so well at college they were sending me on a residential course. Doing what? Shoe pastry. <laughs> and Joe, you say this film is a great example of the power of entertainment. You know, it opened last week, and it was somewhat neglected because of the attention that was given to Gone Girl. It's finding its own audience, though, and it's not surprising because it's got a good subject that it treats with enormous goodwill and, and charm. The subject, simply put, was the decision in 1984 by gays and um, uh, lesbians on Gay Pride Day in 1984 in London to support the coal miners who were on strike and under siege from the Thatcher administration. And the coal miners wanted no part of any support from gays and lesbians. That's the essence of the story. Uh, it's an extraordinary story that is about goodwill and solidarity. And uh, it's a feel-good movie that makes you feel genuinely good. I love it. That's what I need. I'm putting pride on my 2C list. Joe, thank you so much for that.